So without any further ado, um, we'll pass on to uh, our speaker, um, Sheikh Majid Mahmoud. Uh, he is an all-time favourite here at FOSIS in our FOSIS family, and uh, we look up to, um, to him very dearly, and we love his appearances every time. Um, he is one of the leading activists of uh, Dawa in his community. Um, with his heart-touching reminders and soft approach, um, Sheikh Majid makes Islam digestible and beloved to people of all ages. Um, Sheikh Majid is a shining example for students seeking knowledge and seeking growth and knowledge and development within Islamic studies. He is the first graduate of Al Maghrib Institute to become one of its instructors and performing exceptionally in over 50 seminars. Um, including theology, Islamic jurisprudence, and Quranic sciences. Sheikh Majid also travels worldwide lecturing about different aspects of Islam, and he works full-time as a mechanical engineer, and he has completed his bachelor's degree in Islamic jurisprudence and legal theory from Al Medina International University. He also has a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering um, and from the University of Windsor and a master's degree in business administration from Wayne State University. Um, also, uh, so they've, they've also, Sheikh has also released a series, um, a book series, and um, we, uh, we will also, he'll, he has also got on, on YouTube uh, a 21 part Sira series um, that's available for everyone to go through and reflect upon. Just um, we'll show his series just now, Tira series. What did the companions see in the Prophet ﷺ for them to love him more than anyone in the world? What did they see in him for one of them to say, I would rather lose my life than the Prophet ﷺ being pricked by a thorn? What did they see in him for them to categorize their second happiest moment in their lives after accepting Islam is when they heard the Prophet ﷺ saying, Al-mar'u ma'man ahab. The person will be with whom they love and they love the Prophet so much and they were hoping to be with him in Jannah even though he was still around them in dunya in this worldly life. The Prophet ﷺ was the living embodiment of the message of Allah. Aisha, may Allah be pleased by her, she said, Kana al Quran. His character was all based on the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah. If you truly love Allah, then follow. Okay, without any further ado, uh, we'll pass on to Sheikh Majid Mahmoud. Thank you, all right, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Just want to make sure you guys can hear me clearly. I can only see Sister Nawal. Thumbs up if you can hear me good. Okay, thumbs up. Okay, ahsan. All right, Zakhmullah khair. Excellent. First of all, we begin by mentioning the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say Bismillah. So Allah can put blessings in my speech, blessings in your hearing, blessings in my sincerity, and in your sincerity. And I begin by thanking every one of you, Jazakumullah Khairan, for all those who are participating, for our wonderful panelists, for the team behind the scenes. Thank you so much for putting this together. You know, Alhamdulillah, uh, we have the blessing of technology. And by the way, just in case we get disconnected, just give me a couple minutes, I'll be back inshallah. So with this being said, Big thank you to all of you, really. And alhamdulillah, I've been participating with FOSIS events for uh, maybe 2014 or 2015, approximately. When I first came, did the first tour uh, with the FOSIS universities on campus. So with that being said, I cannot thank you guys all enough for the invite and how, especially the team. And now we, big thank you to the attendees, but especially for the team that is like, was insisting to do a conference. There's a pandemic, we still have to have a conference. There's a virus going over, we still have to do the conference. We have school, we still have to do the conference. And the de determination is just on a whole other level. So may Allah accept from all of you, Amin Rabbil Alameen. All right, so when we speak about hardship in times of grief and so on and so forth, and I know you might have heard it before, but cer certain information needs to be heard once more. 
and continuously remembered. What's that information? What does sabr mean? Before I go into talk about being patient and how to deal with times of grief, what does patience mean? When we say sabr, I remember one time I taught a class in Fort Lauderdale in Florida. So I said patience and along these words, and then one English teacher came to me, maybe he's right, maybe he's wrong, but I trust him. He said, Brother Majid, in general, the word patience in the English language is passive, not really active of action the way Islam defines it. So he, when he said that to me, I realized now it makes sense why some people get angry when you tell them during times of hardship, be patient. Ah, now it makes sense. Because in Islam, when we speak about sabr, it means three things. Ready? Number one, be patient means your heart should never be hopeless. That's one. Be patient. That means your tongue should never complain. Number three, be patient. You don't let your body be abusive. That's three. So when you are patient, you have to fulfill these three. Never be hopeless. Never use foul language, complain about Allah. And number three, never, never be physically abusive. So in essence, in Islam, is there a time where it is okay to lose your sabr? With that definition, the answer is never. But we say, you know what, if I do this, I will lose my patience. La. In Islam, there's never a time where it is okay to lose your patience. It is never okay to ever be hopeless. It is never okay to be complaining about Allah. It is never okay to be physically abusive. That is why, brothers and sisters, out of all the characters in Islam, you know, from patience, to gratitude, to truthfulness, and so on, when it comes to sabr, Allah says, Those who are patient, Allah will reward them with no accountability. Will reward them limitless. You know why? Because you had to be patient, limitless throughout your entire life. So as a result of that, the reward is also limitless. Subhanallah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all patience. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. All right. So let's go, inshallah, proceed more and one of our wonderful speakers right before me, I was hearing her session, and she said how typically patience is broken up into parts, right? Anybody here remembers at the end of her speech, she said about patience and how it's broken down? Anybody would like to type it up of what were the categories she divided them to? Feel free to type it. If you're watching with your family, watching with friends, discuss it within yourself, inshallah. So, uh, Hawa, may Allah bless you. Patience in adversity. That was one of them, right? And what's the other patience? Anyone remembers? Maybe Hawa can help us once again. Aywa. Patience in doing good deeds. Excellent. May Allah grant you, Hawa, the ability to be with the four greatest women in Jannah. Ameen. Huh. What's the last category? So she got the dua and none of you got it. La. May Allah grant you all Jannah. Don't worry. And then said, Sal-Sabil, she said, patience in avoiding sin, and Linta, and Hawa, Jazakumullah Khair, and everyone who tried to participate, may Allah bless you and protect you. Shabana, Jazakumullah Khair. Excellent. Fantastic. Now, the focus of this topic assigned to me was which category? The one which is focused on adversity. Focused on adversity. Now, there are certain things in life that we all have to face. They are guaranteed. What are they? Death and taxes, right? That's what some people say, death and taxes. That's true. But the other guarantee in life besides death and taxes is what? Is that you and I, part of life, we will have to face hardship. Have to, it's just uh, the way of life. Brother, what's your proof? Allah says in the Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I was like, should I, should I tell you guys to test you which ayah it is? But it's okay. وَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ I'll translate. Allah says, we shall test you. No doubt, we will test you with some fear, some loss of wealth, some loss of life. Then Allah says, وَبَشِّرَ الصَّابِرِينَ But give the good news to those who pass the test. 
to those who pass it with patience, may Allah make you all patient, Amir Rabbil Alameen. Excellent. As Riza said in Surah Al-Baqarah. So with this being said, one of the ways to be able to overcome adversity, there's many, many things to share with you. One of them connected to this ayah is to remember that it's not just you. When you remember this, it actually makes things easier on you. For example, remember maybe the one time you did your test in school on campus and then you got a very low grade. Remember that test? Yes, that one. And people asked you, oh, Sister Sara, Brother Ahmed, what was your grade? And you're like, uh, I don't want to tell you what my grade is, what my mark is. They tell you, come on, don't be like that. Tell us. You're like, no, this is personal, private property. I cannot tell you what my grade on my test is. No way. But then when they say, okay, you know what, Ahmed? You know what, Sarah? You know what, brother and sister? I, you don't tell me your grade, but I want to tell you that I failed the test. You will be like, you failed the test? Oh my God, me too. Then you start sharing. Uh, you start sharing your hardships. You start sharing your grade. Basically, you no longer see the difficulty as big as it was. And one of the reasons is because you realize it's not just me. Everybody goes through this, subhanAllah. Not just everybody goes through this, but the more Allah loves a person, the more Allah tests that person. And let's be very clear, the test can be more through gratitude, through blessings, or through hardship that requires patience. May Allah grant you all the highest grades in this life and afterlife. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. There's a famous story in this, in this regards. And it's very important, like we all, you know, we lose loved ones, we all struggle. There was a, a very righteous man by the name of Dhul Qarnayn, as some of you may know. Dhul Qarnayn was a righteous, righteous man, very good to his mother. And it was narrated in the books of Tafsir that he sent a letter to his mom. And Dhul Qarnayn was a very wealthy man, very wealthy. So he sent a letter to his mom and asked her to invite the neighborhood for dinner. Invite all the sisters, let them all come over. So the mother, she honored the request of her son. She set up everything. And then the son told her, Dhul Qarnayn, mom, but make one condition for the ladies that if you have faced a hardship in your life, do not eat from the food. Do not eat from the food. So the mother maybe didn't think much about it or so. She loves her son. She honored that request. Sisters came over for the dinner and the food was ready. And then she opens with an introduction. If, if no one here faced a hardship, then eat. But if you faced any hardship or calamity, then please do not eat from the food. And then this mother noticed that no one is eating. Sister, such and such, eat from it. She's like, no, I lost my husband. Okay. Sister, so and so, bismillah, eat. No, actually, I'm sick today a little bit. Sister, eat. No, I actually lost my son or my daughter or my job or whatever the case is. So she realized all of them have hardships. Then her son followed up with a note basically telling her, mom, I'm just preparing you mentally that your son, myself, Dhul Qarnayn, is about to lose his life. And I am sick. I don't think I will make it through the sickness that I'm going through. I might pass away anytime. So then the mother realized that, you know what? This is difficulty, but every one of us is going through, it, through this and everybody eventually ate and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. So that's number one is to think that it's not just you because this is the whole notion, especially, uh, by the way, especially with the whole coronavirus and pandemic, you don't see other people. You're just like oh, at home, why am I going through this? Everybody's struggling. What, one of the highest unemployment rates in the nation, where I'm at today in the United States, one of the highest unemployments ever. May Allah protect us, may Rabbil Alameen. People are struggling, all of us are going through this. What else, brothers and sisters? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What do we say? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He taught us in this beautiful hadith, he said, Ajaban li amr al mu'min. Amazing is the state of the believer. Everything that happens to the believer is good. So, Oh, you who's watching, you're a believer, alhamdulillah. 
You believe in La ilaha illallah? Absolutely. Muhammad Rasulullah? A hundred percent. You trust Allah? I try my best. The Prophet is telling you, O oh, believing man or woman, whatever in the world you go through, whatever situation, if in a situation of a blessing, promotion, scholarship, marriage, child, increase in money, increase in health, in strength, any blessing you go through, that's all a test. And you are grateful for that, then know that what you have faced is good for you. Now, most of us agree to that. The other half is a difficult part on many. And whatever hardship that you face, loss of wealth, loss of health, loss of life, then it's good for you if you were patient. That's what the Prophet wasallam said. This comes to show you that wallahi, Allah loves the believers. And never does Allah put a hardship in your way because he hates you. This is invalid. This is wrong understanding. Allah will never make a believer face something because Allah hates them. No way. A'udhu Billah. Impossible. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is good for you. So that's the second point. Whatever you face, not just everybody goes through it. Number two, it's something a way if you pass and you're patient, know that Allah loves you. Know that it's good for you. You'll be, you'll, you'll be like, but brother, it's very difficult to like comprehend that someone backbiting me, me going through people gossiping about me is khair. How? Like, I understand, I have faith, but how is it possible that someone slandering me is khair for me, is good for me if I was patient? How is it that I broke my ankle or today as I was cutting the food for breakfast and I cut my finger, I was patient. How is that cut good for me? You may never see it today, but you may see it tomorrow. You may not know why today, but you may know why next year. And you may die and not even know why. But know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a wisdom behind everything. And this is the very famous example of, of our mother, the mother of the believers, Aisha radiallahu anha. When Aisha was accused of doing this major sin, radiallahu anha, may Allah be pleased by her. Aisha was slandered. Aisha was accused. All of these things. You know what Allah said? لا تحسابوه شرا لكم. O oh, Aisha, O oh, believers, O oh, Prophet Muhammad sallam, do not think the slander against Aisha was bad. What, what does it mean? Was bad for you. بل هو خير لكم. Rather, it is good for you. How is the slander of Aisha خير? Allah said that in Surah An-Nur. Look. If the only benefit that came from the slander of our mother Aisha radiallahu anha is to show the whole world the status of Aisha because Quran was revealed, because Allah revealed ayat about the innocence of Aisha. So if the only benefit that came from that slander is to show the world the status of Aisha, that is enough of a benefit. Agreed? If the only benefit that came from that slander is to show the world that the Quran is not written by man, but it's revelation from Allah Ar-Rahman, then that's enough of a benefit. Why? Because it took almost one month after the slander for the revelation to come. So if it was written by man, the Prophet would have, quote unquote, that's what some would say, would have written it after one day, after two days, the ones who slander innocent women shall be whipped. No. It was a whole month. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ cannot speak from his own about religious matters in such way. He was waiting for Allah's revelation. If the only benefit that came from that hardship, that came from that slander, is to expose the munafiqeen wal munafiqat, the hypocrite men and women, that's enough of a benefit. So you may not see the benefit immediately, a month, two. How many of us? How many, including maybe some of us right now, right live, you went to propose to someone, okay, as a brother, or a sister received a proposal, or a sister proposed, whatever that works, inshallah, all halal, all kosher, as they say, right? And then things did not work out, and you were devastated, right? And you were crying. I feel you, you know, many of us have been there before, right? Crying, and I've been making dua to Allah, but guess what? A year, two years later, Alhamdulillah, it didn't work out, right? Alhamdulillah. But do not wait. That's what I want from all of us here. Do not wait 
for a hardship to make sense for you, then you become patient. No, do not wait to see the wisdom behind it. Do not wait to like, oh, uh aha. Don't wait for an uh aha moment. No uh aha moment. This what happened? Alhamdulillah for everything. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed. And I'm very satisfied and content with that. May Allah grant you all patience and grant you all ease. So what's, so how do we cope with hardship as we mentioned? Number one, remember it's not just you. Many people in the world go through this. It's something that we cannot run away from, right? As taxes, death, and then tests of hardship. Number two, remember and realize any hardship that you face, if you were patient towards it, then that is good for you. It's the way of life, but wait, 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 wait. For the believers, remember, right? It's all good, but for the believers. Number three of the ways to cope with the hardship is dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ready for this? One time Abu Salama radiallahu anhu came back home. He told his wife, Ummu Salama, Ya Ummu Salama, I learned a dua today. I learned a supplication today from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If I were to be given the world, if I were to be given millions of dollars, or learn the dua, no, I would choose to learn that dua, then take that much money. Wow, what's this dua? What is this ticket that you have that you look forward to use? What is that? Now here is the hadith in authentic narration. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, excellent. He said, no person, faces a calamity, faces hardship, and they say the following, ready? Yalla, bismillah, three things. We should all memorize that, inshallah. If you face a calamity, your iPad broke, your laptop fell, something, a hardship happened, bismillah. You say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. To Allah we belong, and to Allah we shall, what? We shall return, excellent. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Number two. Allahumma jurni fi musibati. Oh Allah, reward me for that calamity. Why? Because when you go through a hardship, that pain erases your sins. And the sins fall the way the tree leaves fall. That's when you go through a hardship. Maybe the seat is not comfortable, right? Maybe right now you're sitting in a position that is not very comfortable because of whatever reason, all that hardship that you're going through, not put yourself in it though, erases your sins. So we say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. To Allah we belong and to Allah we shall return. We got to memorize, alhamdulillah. Number two, Allahumma jurni fi musibati. Oh Allah, reward me for the calamity, like what I'm going through. Number three, wa akhlif li khayran minha. And give me something better than what I have lost. Halas, you got that? Now check this out. After some time, <clears throat> Abu Salama passes away. The husband of Um Salama, he dies. And they were known to be some of the greatest couples, very respectful, very practicing. So Um Salama said, I remembered the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So she said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. To Allah we belong and to Allah we shall return. Check. She got the first one. Allahumma jurni fi musibati. Oh Allah, reward me for the calamity I am going through. She said, I could not say the third one. I could not say this. What was that third one? Wa akhlif li khayran minha. Give me something better. Give me something better than what I have lost. She said, and who is better than Abu Salama? Who is better than this wonderful man that I used to have in my life? But she said, you know what? She went forward with it. She trusted Allah. She had yaqeen. She had certainty. So she said, and I said it. And give me something better than what I have lost. Brothers and sisters, not too long after that dua was made. What happened? Someone came knocked on the door of the house of Umm Salama. May Allah be pleased by her. He says, I'm coming here 
representing the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, and what's going on? What do you want? He is asking, the Prophet is asking for your hand in marriage. Allahu Akbar. He's asking for your hand in marriage. How do you think Umm Salama felt? How do you think she felt? She, did she cry? Did she say, Alhamdulillah, the one who fulfills his promise? Then she said, indeed, Allah has given me someone who is better. Allah has given me the best, Muhammad Wasallam. That is why, brothers and sisters, Umm Salama is one of the mother of the believers. Allahu Akbar. But say this dua with certainty the way she did, even though logically she could not think of it. She could not see how can Allah make my next phase in life better than the first phase in life. We think that this is the best it can possibly be. We lose it and we're like, how can it ever be fixed? What if we say now, for this pandemic, for this lockdown that we're facing, we say to Allah, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Ya Allah, to you we belong and to you we shall return. Allahumma ajurna fi musaybatin. Oh Allah, reward every one of us, myself, Sister Safiya, Nawal, everyone, FOSIS team, every participant, Ya Allah, reward them for the hardships that they went through during this virus. Number three, and Ya Allah, grant us a better replacement. Make the life after this virus, make this life tomorrow, today, and after tomorrow be better than last year and the year before. People say the world will never be the same again. But we as believers believe that the world will be better for the believers again, inshallah, and even better than how it was before. Allahu Akbar. And this is how you have to approach things. May Allah protect you. May Rabbil Alameen. So what was number one? Number one, remember it's not just you who goes through hardship, all of us go through it. Number two, remember any hardship that you face is always good for you if you are truly patient. Number three, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it's an important element in coping with that and you had a whole session or soon we'll have inshallah from when I read the timetable of a, of a session about the dua being the weapon of the believer. May Allah accept except from all of you, Amir Rabbil Alameen. How about we take some questions from our attendees if possible, and inshallah we can resume afterwards, bi'idhnillah. So any questions on these three so far? I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Feel free to ask, and inshallah, maybe you will have it, or the panelists, you can run the show at this moment, or I can just read it up. It's up to you. I just submit your, your, any questions on the chat, um, inshallah. Okay. So, Sister Safiya, would you want to read off the questions or should I read it? If you want to read them out, that's also fine. Um, okay. Them, okay, let, let me do that, inshallah. All right. So, one of the questions here, what if you feel like the hardship is something you brought on yourself? Very good question. Yeah, and you are suffering because of a sin you committed. What do you do in this situation? Very good question. Now, if, you, if the hardship that you are facing is because of a sin that you have committed, then that is good. Then that is khair. What? Brother, come on. This is the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. You face a hardship, you're a believer, you are patient, it's good for you. It's a test from Allah to filter you to see if you're patient or not. It's a test from Allah to purify you from sins. It's a test from Allah to elevate your status. It does not matter the wisdom behind the hardship. It does not matter as in, why did it happen? It does not matter as much as your reaction to the hardship. You being patient to the hardship will always be good for you. So if it was sins, because of the sins you committed, and you're facing the hardship and you were patient, then know that this hardship purified you from that sin and the best of people are the ones who are purified in this life and not in the afterlife. My suggestion would be, do not wait for the hardship to come so it can purify you from sins. Rather, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seek His forgiveness and allow that to be means of that purification from that sin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Now, all right. What else do we have? How do we move on from past sins you have committed? 
How do you remain patient with this regret and remorse? If you have regret and remorse, remember, you did something that is wrong, three elements. I want everyone, inshallah, to focus. May Allah protect you. You did something that is wrong, there are three elements. One to do with the past, you promise. Yani, no, no, sorry. It's one to do with the past, which you regret. So you regret the past. You what? Regret the past. Number two, to do with the present. You have to stop the sin immediately. You cannot say one last sip of alcohol. You cannot say one last phone call to that person that we're doing haram relationship. No, it's over. Stop now. Regret the past and promise you will never do it in the future. If you have these three locked down, inshallah, then we're optimistic Allah will accept your repentance. And number four, number four, if your sin involved the taking of the rights of others, return that right to them. Fair enough? And be optimistic that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your repentance. And Allah knows best. How to apply patience when faced with a test? We, did, we mentioned it right at the beginning of the talk of what does it mean to be patient. Number three things. When you are patient, that means you are not hopeless. You give up on life. I'm a miserable person. I have no luck in this life. You know what? Allah hates me. La. Patience, meaning this heart is never hopeless. No matter how big the hardship is, you're never hopeless towards Allah's mercy. Number two, patience means you never complain with your tongue against Allah. Fantastic. Number three, you never physically abuse yourself or anyone else. You hold yourself. You don't be abusive physically. So that is what you do when you're faced with patience. Now, okay. Next. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Can we view a mistake we made as a calamity upon us? Okay, we answered that question. Excellent, beautiful. The three things to say, are they found in the hadith? Yes, the three things are, can be found in the hadith. Now, uh, I don't know the exact number of the hadith, but this is what I can uh, share with you. If you want, if you go to YouTube, you can put Majid Mahmoud Dua and then put Calamity. So put Majid Mahmoud Dua Calamity and then you will get that Dua written for you and the video described. Sounds good? Du Majid Mahmoud Dua Calamity and you will find a Dua that we mentioned to you. Fantastic. All right. The th three things to say, I've okay, done that. What does patience entail? We did that, alhamdulillah. You mentioned at the start, no violence is self-harming going, yes, self-harming, of course, because if you notice when I said about patient is that you don't abuse yourself, right? You don't abuse yourself. So being patient, and you, subhanAllah, sometimes, you know, may Allah protect us. Some people may like, you know, cut themselves or, you know, hit themselves hard when they're, you know, what are you doing to yourself? This is abuse, right? May Allah protect us. Abusing yourself, you know. May Allah grant us all shifa and cure. Amir Rabbil Alameen. All right. Okay, what else? Is there a difference between complaining and getting things off your chest? Yes, very good question. Complaining and venting. Listen. There's complaining about Allah and there's complaining to Allah. What was that again? Did you guys pay attention? There is complaining about Allah and there's complaining to Allah. The first one takes you away from Allah. The second one brings you so close to Allah. When you complain about Allah, we all know that's haram. Ya Allah, why do you do this to me? Why is this happening? This is not fair. La, this takes you very far. That's unacceptable. But you may say, brother, I need to complain, I understand, but that's not the type of complaining we want. But vent, vent, yes, we tell you vent, complain, yes, take it off your chest, yes, I want you to take it off your chest because you will explode, you will go nuts, as they say. So what do I do? Complain to the one who can change things. Complain, you want the weather, the weather is hot, complain to Allah who can send you a customized cloud just for you. Complain to Allah that can change your body's temperature. Complain to Allah who can cure you from that sickness. Vent to Allah, he loves it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
He says how Allah loves when we go to Allah, we complain to Allah. He loves it. And Allah promises. Actually, Allah doesn't just promise. Allah says, Udu'uni. Allah says, come. Allah says, I'm available. Allah says, I'm here. You know what's interesting? The bigger the name of a human being is, the bigger the name of the, na of the person, you know, mention a big name. Okay, this player in this uh, club uh, for football, okay? To reach him, it's so difficult. The bigger the name, the more difficult to reach. But there's no name bigger than Allah, yet there's no one easier to reach more than Allah. Allah, he's there. Every night, every night, after the first third of the night, Allah descends and asks the people, anybody here wants help? Allah does that every single night. Every single night after the first third of the night. He says, anyone wants help so I can help him. Anybody wants forgiveness so I can forgive them. And where are we at that time? May Allah forgive us and protect us. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. Okay. How to have, okay. How to remain patient after haram relationship. Uh, and this is, this is difficult, right? Haram relationship, adversity, toughness. One of the main things is being busy, right? You have to do your best to get substitution. You know, we tell people, oh, don't listen to this haram music. We tell people, oh, don't listen, don't hang out with this haram uh, opposite gender. Okay, if I cut that, cut, 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 you need to do your best to get a substitution, right? And the best of substitution, the best of them from that relationship that is wrong to have a proper relationship, right? We say life goals. May Allah grant you all a righteous spouse. But I cannot get married now. Then one of the best ways is to have a relationship with good people within your, within your gender, with wonderful. A sister has a wonderful, very close group of sisters to talk to, be around. You need to fill that vacuum. Because we used to be, not me, I mean Allah protect us, I'm not saying about me or you, you know, getting up at night, speaking to the one of the opposite gender, it was for an hour, two and three. So now that phone calls are done. That Snapchat is closed. So it needs to be filled for something else. May Allah protect you, Amir Rabbil Alameen. All right. What if we cannot make ourselves regret the past? You, uh, you cannot regret the past? Okay. One of the ways to make you regret the past is to realize that there's no way you or I commit a sin except that we had to use Allah's blessing against him. Do you not regret that? There's no way anyone in the world can be disrespectful to Allah. No one in the world can be doing the haram unless it required the use of Allah's blessing. Does not not shake the heart and make us regret and feel ashamed? What about the thing about Sinning and committing haram will be a reason to deserve a punishment in Jahannam, in hellfire. There's no regret. When the police officer pulls you aside because you were speeding, you were speeding so fast, 100 kilometers per hour, 120 or 150, police officer comes, do you act arrogantly? I don't care. No, you're like, I'm so sorry, officer, you regret. Uh, why? Because of a ticket, 100 pounds, 300 pounds, that's it. And you regret and tears. I promise this will be the last time over a ticket, a few hundred pounds. We will not regret when the ticket is not Jahannam, when the ticket is Allah's anger, when the ticket is Allah's blessings being taken away from us. Think of these to help you be regretful. Whenever committing a sin, may Allah make it easy for all of you. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. All right. So someone would like to clarify, may Allah bless them. This dua of inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un and so on is to be said when you go through a calamity in general and not specific just about the loss of a loved one. Naam, excellent. Okay. What advice would you give to the one suffering from major mental health issues and suicidal thoughts at that point? Depending if I know the person very well, that will have a specific discussion if I know them. But in general, in general response, seek uh, counseling, mental health counselors that understand. And my suggestion, my strong suggestion 
is when you go to these people, try your first priority to go to someone who understands mental health and understands the deen. Someone that understands both, that will be very helpful, inshallah. Now, excellent. All right. How are we doing with time? I think the time is up, right? 12.30? Or should we go ahead to continue? Actually, you know, we have five more minutes, Sophia, or? Yeah, we can still go ahead. Oh, um, five five minutes? Five minutes, yeah. Allah's five minutes. All right. Okay, bismillah. Is it okay to vent to others? So we have a question. Is it okay to vent to other people? Can you, for example, can uh, Sister Sophia vent to Sister Nawal? Can Sister Nawal vent to Sister Sophia? Can they do that? In general, this is the general rule of thumb. Do not complain to someone who cannot benefit you. That's generally speaking, right? And it, would it make sense for someone to be drowning? I'm drowning, I'm drowning. And then you vent to someone next to you who is drowning. They're also suffering just like you. They're also drowning. So who do you vent to? The captain of the ship. He's up there. He can give you the floaty, right? He can give you that survival kit. So complaining to others, in general, they're not saying haram or halal, but it's not beneficial unless they can, in one way or other, help you. So maybe I vent to my brother or my sister, I have a headache. Okay, what did I benefit? It's just negative vibes now. But if I'm saying that so they can give me Tylenol or some pain relief, then no, no problem. But in general, just something just to keep in mind, may Allah protect you, Amir Rabbil Alameen. I'll give you a quick example. Ready for this one? So in one of my jobs, I was working at a company. I came to my office, and then I found under my keyboard a document. So I lifted the keyboard, flipped the document, and I saw Muslims who did September 11, the 9-11 attacks, the terrorist attacks. So I read this documents accusing Muslims and things like that and putting it in my desk. So I felt I had to tell my manager about that. So I went, showed her the document. She said, we can take it to HR, human resources, try to find out the person who did that. Anyway, so the point being is this, I did not want to escalate it so much just yet. So I said, I wanna keep this with you now as an FYI for your information. Because brothers and sisters, if I don't sh vent to the manager and then I get a letter after a day or two or a month or so saying I will kill you in the parking lot and then now I tell my manager, she will tell me when did this all happen? And I will say a few months ago, I got a document. They will be upset. It will not work out. So this can be for a benefit. But if it's very cold, very cold, and I vent to brother Muhammad, Muhammad, it's so cold. What did I benefit? Psychologically, psychologically, I did not get warmer. I actually got colder, <laughs> right? It's just more negative vibes. So if it's cold, channel your complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who can actually change the weather for you. So in summary, yes, vent to people, no problem. Uh, someone who can help you, someone who's trustworthy, someone with experience, someone with knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of you. Ameen rabbil alamin. Okay, what else do we have? Would you be given more reward? That's a question. Would you be given more reward if you only thank Allah in hardship? Or would it be better to complain to Allah instead because the problem is very hard? They come hand in hand, hand in hand. When we say about patience, it means do not complain about Allah, but it means to complain to Allah. You see that? So no, patience, it means complaint. Patience wants you to complain, but not about Allah, rather to Allah. And I hope this clarifies to all of us. It's very important, all right? To Rasulullah, he did it. When the member of Ta'if, when they were st throwing stones at him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they complained and so on. Sorry. <clears throat> what happened? He complained to Allah. Allahumma inni ashku ilayka. Literally means, Oh Allah, I complain to you my weakness and how people belittle me. If you're not angry at me, then I have no worries or concerns. All what I want is for you to be pleased by me. Allahu Akbar. So when he complained to Allah, what happened after Al-Ta'if? 
the Prophet went to the Isra and Mi'raj, went to Allah. You see that? Musa alayhi salam complained to Allah. When the two ladies, they came, they wanted water for the cattle. So Musa came, helped them. Then he went aside, complained to Allah, I am in need, I am poor. What happened when Musa complained? He got married to one of these sisters. He got a job, he got a house, he got an income, right? Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, he complained to Allah, this woman is trying to seduce me. Yes, what happened? Allah protected him and ended up being the, the minister, the financial minister of Egypt. So complaining to Allah is very important. If there is traffic, you're driving, there's traffic. Ya Allah, the traffic is so much. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, I'm so weak. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, help me. That's not complaining about Allah. You're complaining to Allah. So Allah can make this trip back home easy. Allah can make this trip back home blessed. Whether Quran memorization or a lecture or speaking to our friend or just simple relaxation and calmness that Allah can grant it to all of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it possible for all of us. Ameer Rabbil Alameen. Okay. Let's do it. What happens if I lose patience and I rant to someone but end up gossiping by mistake? And this is honestly, that's one of the main issues when we have that times of grief and we channel it to people and we just speak and we go into gossiping and backbiting. So look what happened. That's what Shaitan wants. You are already in state of grief and now he whispers to you to a backbite and gossip. You know why? To make your state of grief even higher to make it even more miserable. So one of the ways now is to seek Allah's forgiveness. And that, pay attention, that same person you vented to and you back bit with no justification, with no justification about someone, tell that same person good things about the person you gossiped about or you back bit about to be able to recompense for that and pray for that individual and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this easy for all of you. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. All right, two more questions after this, inshallah. All right, Bismillah. All right, uh, how to have patience with immense heartbreak. I think we addressed that. Uh, what else do we have? What if we can't make ourselves, we mentioned that. Okay, we mentioned patience, and okay. Okay, thanking Allah during hardship. Okay, listen. Thanking Allah during hardship. There's a slight technical, maybe we can end on this one, inshallah. There's a difference between shukr, shukriya, right? Shukr and alhamdulillah. When you say shukr, Allah says in the Quran, when you say shukr, what happens? Allah increases you in the blessing, right? Allah increases you. When you say alhamdulillah, it's different. Alhamdulillah can be said, I want you all remember this, Alhamdulillah can be said during times of ease and times of hardship, that's the essence. But shukur usually is said only during times of ease. Remember that because shukur it comes with the blessings. But Alhamdulillah is through blessings and through hardship. <clears throat> so it, a person should say Alhamdulillah and not want more hardships. It doesn't make sense, people. It doesn't make sense. Ya Allah, continue to test me through hardship. No, that makes no sense. Because the Prophet ﷺ used to say what? Allahumma inni as'aluka al-'afwa wal -afia. He used to pray to Allah for ease. That's why he asked Allah for blessings. He would rather be tested through ease than through hardship. And that's the believer. It's common sense. It's logical. It's the deen. Al-'afia. We want afia for myself for all of my family, for my loved ones. So with that being said, brothers and sisters, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you all afia. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you all jannah. And remember, being patient doesn't mean you cannot be sad. Being patient can mean that you can cry. Being patient can mean that you are sad, but it means that you're never hopeless, that you never complain about Allah. May Allah protect you all. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumullahu khairan. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته